All right. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you so much to Way Up for hosting this with us. So just a couple of, I guess, logistical things. If you have questions throughout this, feel free to put them in the chat. And Anka will answer any questions she can via chat if she can. Uh, if there's questions that you have for our panelists or things that maybe need to be asked in a bigger forum, we're going to try to leave some time for Q&A at the end if we can. So feel free to, to save them for the end as well. But any questions you have along the way, feel free to put them in the chat. Okay, so let me share my screen. So welcome everyone again, so excited to have everyone here. The topic for today's webinar is to learn more about how new grads started their careers here at Viva in one of our development programs and how the skills and experiences uh, they gained from these programs has contributed to their career progression and their success here at Viva today. So first I'd like to introduce our panelists. We have Kyle Stevenson, a newly promoted Director of Product Management. Mary Molnar, an account executive, and Rebecca Wright, a practice manager in one of our technical consulting practices. All three of them started in our consultant development program here at Viva. And uh, we also have Anka, who's our director of the consultant development program. She'll be managing the facilitation today. And then I'm Sarah, and I oversee our new grad development programs here at Viva collectively called Generation Viva, which you're seeing on the screen. And we're just so excited to have you all here today. Um, before we jump into the panelist portion of this, I know that there were some questions ahead of time that were asked, and so I wanted to cover a few of those questions in some slides, and, and that may answer some of those questions. So let me start. All right. So at the, at the core, Viva is a software company. Um, we are a software company that builds innovative software for the life sciences industry. Um, our end users are usually people in pharma, med device, clinical trial type organizations. But today, Viva is more than just building products. We have a whole suite of products um, that are integrated together. We have data that provides our customers with the insights they need to do their job more effectively. We have an in-house services team who implements our products to ensure they're used correctly and highly adopted. We have business consulting organization that ensures our customers look at the overall picture of their commercial strategy and operations and how they can operate more efficiently. And what else makes up Viva? Our customers. We have over 1,100 customers globally with more uh, the top pharma companies that you would know in most household names and also the small to medium sized business um, customers as well. And then our people, we have over 5,000 employees today globally, and we have a goal to get to 10,000 employees by 2025. Our vision is to build the industry cloud for life sciences. That means building great software, data, and business consulting to help our customers operate more efficiently and to connect them to their most important stakeholders, including clinical research sites, patients, and doctors. Our values are the most important lens we use to make decisions at Viva. Do the right thing is to remind us about moral and ethical decision-making. Next is customer success. And we think about customer success in three ways, our customers, the success of the individuals at our customers, and ultimately the industry as a whole. Employee success. So what you're gonna hear about today is, is an example of employee success. We aim to create the right work environment for employees, for their development and their careers. And finally, speed. Speed's an advantage for Viva. We wanna to continue to operate like a startup and to be nimble and to be responsive. You may have just noticed on that previous slide that we're a public benefit corporation. So as Viva continues to play a very important role in helping the industry develop and commercialize new medicines, we wanted to more formally align our value-based approach to how we operate within our company certificate of incorporation. So that's why we became, in February of last year, the first public company to convert to a public benefit corporation. So what that means is we now have a public benefit purpose. That is to help make the industries we serve more productive and to create high quality employment opportunities. We have a legal obligation to balance the interest of our shareholders with our customers, employees, and the communities in which we operate. So we were super proud of this change last year. It was really exciting. And I can honestly say, I think every single Vivan was, was super excited to know that we converted to this public benefit co corporation. 
At Viva, we believe that diversity comes in many forms and it's not super simple. Gender, race, ethnicity, religion, politics, sexual orientation, gen, um, age, et cetera, life experiences really form us all into unique people. Diversity makes us stronger, fuels innovation, and makes Viva an even more important and interesting place to work. So we have started initiatives to broaden the talent pool by targeting our recruitment efforts to attract a more diverse set of candidates. We educate employees on diversity and inclusion topics and managers on reducing bias during hiring process. We analyze employee data and we create communities focused on advancing diversity at Viva, which you're seeing here on the slide today. We've created four, the Viva Black community, the Viva Women's community, the Viva Pride community, and the Viva Asian community. So super um, excited that, that we launched this a couple of years ago. And I think that you could say that it's all going very well. All right, so next, Generation Viva. So what are, we have visions for our company and values for our company. Our vision for Generation Viva is building the foundation of Viva's future by recruiting top university talent and developing their careers in a supportive environment. We do this by adhering to our values, which are learn by doing, developing the person, and we like to have some fun while we're at it. Our programs oops, within Generation Viva today um, so again, a lot of you ask questions about, you know, what do you have available for certain majors or when, what are the types of things that we can get into here? So in the U.S., we have five programs today, and I'm going to start with our engineering development program, also known as EDP. This program is dedicated to developing new grads into well-rounded software engineers who build our products. We have EDPers in several hubs across the U.S., um, Bay Area, Boston, Columbus, Ohio, Raleigh, Indianapolis are all some of our major hubs, also in Toronto um, in Kansas City now we're launching as well. So um, we have several different hubs across, across the US. You'll be fully integrated into the engineering teams from day one. And we're looking for those who have fundamentals and experience that you would learn in a computer science major more than likely. And then we have our consultant development program. This is where everyone on this call came from. These are the folks who implement our products. So they're customer facing. It doesn't require coding. You're going to learn the basics of consulting 101, software implementation, project management, industry knowledge. And for this one, we're open to all majors for this role and have seen a very wide array of majors and definitely not just in STEM. We've gone from STEM to business and, and beyond. This program has specific dedicated tracks into services, so continuing down that consulting path, but also into sales and product management, which you're going to hear examples of today. Next, we have our business consultant development program. It's our newest one of all of the five, or I guess it's actually not. We've launched one more since then. Um, we launched VCDP last summer, and these consultants are also customer facing, a bit different than CDP. CDP focuses more on the tech technical implementation, business consultants focus more on key strategy, content, operations, and process focus for our customers. We uh, have openings for this mostly in the Northeast, so we're looking to hire folks around the Philly, New York, and Boston area um, to be closer to our customers. Next is our analytics development program, also known as ADP. So these are the folks who deliver marketing data insights to the brand marketing teams in pharma. So um, the example I like to give here is when you see ads on TV, for example, for, for drugs, um, how, do, how do you get that data, the insights, who was the target audience, did it reach the right target audience, how do you get that data back to the brand marketing teams in the pharma companies and our analytics development program and the folks that are part of that help make that happen. And then lastly, we have our sales development program, which is now the most recently launched program. Um, it's a rigorous, comprehensive four-year track. So the rest of these are mostly two-year programs. This one is a four-year track dedicated to growing and developing new grads into industry-leading account executives. So during your time in SDP, you're going to gain expertise in consulting, product, industry knowledge, and sales. So you're actually going to start in the consultant development program to learn those that basic core foundation set of skills for consulting product and industry, and then you'll transition over into the sales uh, organization to learn the basics of sales and then how to sell Viva. Um, SDP is accelerated and designed to transform you into an account executive in four years. Okay, let's see. 
this next slide was kind of just more of a screenshot or an overview of, of what I was just explaining here. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot if you want to, if that would help you. But these are our four programs, where they're located, kind of the different roles within the programs, typical majors that we see, and then what you'll do while you're in the program. As I mentioned, we have career path opportunities. These, these programs don't, you don't end at Viva after the program ends, right? So they're all geared and dedicated to getting you into the next big role at Viva. So these are just some examples of some of the roles that you may go into after you finish one of these programs. All right, so now the fun begins. Uh, what you all came to, to see in here today was uh, to meet our panelists, Kyle, Mary, and Rebecca. So Kyle, Mary, and Rebecca, thank you for joining us. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so they actually can see your faces. All right. So thanks again. Um, let's just kind of start with a round robin here. Tell us about you, where you're from, and maybe what you do at Viva. And I'm going to start with Mary. Why don't you go first? Sure. So hi, everybody. I'm Mary Molnar. I'm an account executive with Viva. I live in northern New Jersey been with the company for about four years or so, and I'm the one that has gone through obviously that CDP program to SDP now and have graduated it out as an account executive. I'm excited to be here today and I look forward to your questions. Awesome, thank you, Mary, excited to have you. All right, Kyle, why don't you go next? Tell us about you, where you're from and what you do at Viva. Hmm. Yeah, so my name is Kyle Stevenson. I'm currently based in Granger, Indiana, which if you know where that is, I'll be very impressed. Uh, I am a director of product management within our My Viva for Patients team. Uh, I'm in charge of building our electronic patient reported outcomes application, which gathers information from patients that are in clinical trials and how they're feeling to make sure that they uh, they're getting benefits from that drug or that medical device that they're using. Um, this has been especially fun for me because it spans a lot of the business areas here at Viva, um, such as our clinical operations, which deals with these pharma companies, Site Vault, which deals with clinical research sites. Uh, and then we have a web and mobile application for patients. So bringing all of those together has been a, a fun experience. All right, thanks, Kyle. Look forward to hearing more about that. Uh, Rebecca, let's hear from you next. Tell us about you. Where are you from? What do you do at Viva? Yeah, hi everyone. So I am based outside of Philly. I've been here, born and raised. Um, I joined Viva back in 2016. So I've been here for just over five years now. And I also came through the CDP program. Um, I then kind of moved into the consultant role. So graduating out of CDP as a consultant. And then from there got to actually get into people management and I'm now managing a team of consultants. We're all implementing our products at those sponsors to make sure that they like what our products do and that it works for them and that ultimately they're successful with our products. Awesome, thank you. All right, so let's dig in a little bit. Um, I wanna know first, because I'm gonna guess that if I had asked 15 year old you what you were gonna be doing today, it may not be the roles you're in. So I'd be curious to know, I'm gonna go, I'll go the reverse direction. Rebecca, what did you think you were going to do with your career originally? I wanted to be a doctor so badly. <laughs> um, I studied, I went to school for biomedical engineering because I wanted a backup plan in case I, you know, didn't want to go through eight more years of school and then, you know, start my career pretty late. So I'm happy I did that. I ended up going to a, a lab and working in a lot of different labs and I, I guess I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I enjoyed the work and I had fun and I liked everyone I worked with, but I saw people that were 20 years ahead of me and they were still in the lab and still doing the same thing. And so I think at that point I was like, I don't know what I should do. I'm not gonna go to medical school. I wanna start a family, but I was kind of stuck and then Viva fell into my life in the perfect moment. Excellent, all right. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about how you landed here and how you got here in a minute. But Kyle, let's ask you next. What did you think you were going to do? with your career? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think from, from a very young age, I was always interested in computers. So I, I fully expected, and I did, I went to college for graphic design and management of information systems and business administration. I, I thought I was going to be a web developer and I thought I was going to start my own web company and, you know, kind of move, move on with that, try to grow, grow business that way. And then, yeah, Viva, Viva fell into my lap as well. 
All right, excellent. So we'll learn more about that in a minute too. And Mary, what about you? What did you think you wanted to, what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? <laughs> <laughs> My first idea ever was anything that worked with dolphins because then I'd get to work with dolphins, obviously. <laughs> Um, and then I thought, how about journalism? And then from there, I ultimately landed on psychology, which is what my bachelor's and my master's are in. But I did not even know an account executive existed. I had never heard of it before. I didn't know what it was. So I definitely never saw it coming. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, you still have a chance with dolphins, I feel like. <laughs> um, maybe time. in your second life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's go with um, Kyle. You had probably the more straightforward kind of knew you always wanted to work with computers. How did you, you know, ultimately what? How did you land at Viva and then getting to Viva? How do you think that's kind of shaped your your career <clears throat> so far into the role you're in today as a product manager? Yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned, I wanted to I wanted to grow this web development company, right? And I started it. <laughs> uh, I, I started that company and started making web pages. But then coming out of college, I realized that I actually had to make money to survive. Um, so I I looked around. There was the medical device company in this uh, in this town that I lived in at the time, and found out they were hiring in their clinical department. So. I figured I'd give that a go and I'd do the web stuff on the side, try to grow that so that I can actually leave the current position I was in and go do that. Um, but while I was at that medical device company, uh, I, was at, I was a clinical study administrator, which just has the enviable job of taking paper documents and filing them in binders in a very large binder closet. Um, not the most exciting job in the world. Uh, it was very mind numbing. And so after, after doing that for about eight months, this company that I was in, which is actually a child company of Johnson & Johnson, started implementing Vault ETMF, which is one of Viva's applications. Um, so this was basically an electronic version of all those paper documents and paper binders that I was filing things in seven years ago. Um, and so I, I dug in, right? As soon as I figured out that we were doing that, I, I learned about it as much as I could. I uh, thought it was the most exciting thing to electronify paper into, uh, into this Viva vault thing. Um, so I, I learned everything I could. I ended up moving all of that information over into vault over the next nine months or so. I ended up training a large portion of our clinical department on that system because I was the youngest guy by maybe 20 years and they're like you're you're no things you should teach us how to use this system yeah um and coming out of that honestly I I just got the urge that I wanted to do something more with the system I loved it it was fun I might as well just work for the company right <laughs> um so at that point I reached out to our consultant at that time which uh, all three of us know very well Jen Young um, and basically asked her if they were looking for people to join Viva. And uh, she told me about the CDP program. Um, and that was, yeah, that, that's when the trajectory of my life changed, I would say. Um, yeah. Very cool. So you got your hands on the product first and then got to yeah. join Viva. And then tell us a little bit more about, you know, your time in CDP. What did you, what did you learn in CDP that, yeah, what did you learn in CDP? Yeah, yeah. So CDP, CDP ta taught me so, uh, so many things that I wasn't expecting to learn. <laughs> um, so I expected, you know, to learn about a bunch about the product, which I did. Um, but I think the, the things that I learned the most was, you know, about people management and, and kind of learning about how to deal with conflict, how to deal with, you know, someone who wants something really, really bad, but you know, that thing is not necessarily good for them. Um, and so trying to direct them in a way that, uh, that will help them in the future as well. Um, so yeah, that, those are some of the things I, I think I could think of some more as well, but yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Let's go Rebecca next. So you were thinking about lab and saw, saw lab under you. And then you said, maybe not. Um, so somehow you landed at Viva. Tell us how you landed at Viva and then maybe tell us a little bit about how you've gotten, um, you know, from first day at Viva as an associate consultant to where you are today. Yeah, for sure. So I actually 
my student loans came due. I was living abroad and you needed money too, apparently. I needed money. I needed a real job. And uh, I had a friend from high school. We went to college together and she had started working at Viva in the CBP program right out of college where I took a year off to go work abroad. And she was like, you have to come here. Like you have to, she couldn't really tell me more than just like, it's amazing. Do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone who doesn't really like options. So I just fully committed and was like, I trust you. I'm going to try it. I'm still young. I can do this. And it was everything that I was terrified of. I had like a traumatic traveling experience. I was terrified of flying. I hated public speaking. And every time they interviewed, they were like, so you like this? And I'm like, yeah, totally. I'll do it. Um, but I like, I challenged myself to go way out of my comfort zone. And I, I grew way more than I ever would have if I had gone to a company that was safe and easy, something that I had done before. So I'm so happy that I just blindly went into Viva and just said, this is it. Um, how I got from CDP to here, I think is some luck, some, you know, hard, a lot of hard work and the, you know, just it's the right fit. So my story is that I was in CDP and I implemented the heck out of clinical and all of our other um, applications at the time. And then when I graduated out, I decided to focus on our clinical applications in particular for our smaller customers. And I just knew that I had a passion for this. And so I went to the person who was running the team at the time and said, I want to be on your team. And so when I graduated, I went to his team and some things happened. He was constantly changing. And so some things happened around that team where we ended up dividing up the um, it into three practices to specialize on clinical and quality and regulatory. And at the time, I really still didn't know quite what I wanted to do, but I knew eventually I wanted to get into people management. And Viva really took the chance on me to say, you know what, you're young. You don't have quite the experience that we would have wanted, but we're going to give you a shot. You can, you're going to be the team lead for this, um, for this practice. And from there, it just naturally progressed to them becoming more of a full-time practice manager and running a bigger team. Yeah. It's interesting because you talk about, you know, how much I think things have grown. How many, how many people were on that team when you first joined it? Do you remember after you graduated from CDP? When I first joined the SMB team together, it was maybe like seven. And how many is it today? Oh, I can't tell you that. I have, <laughs> I have 10 people on my team yeah. in clinical specifically, so easily 30. Yeah, so that's more. just a clear example of you know how much things change and grow, how fast things are growing here at Viva. And that was just in the past couple of years, right? And mm -hmm. um, there's no telling you know, all the opportunities that may become available in the next few years, because we're, we're trying to double in size again, you know, by 2025. So very cool story. All right, Mary, tell us about your, your journey from dolphins to psychology to CDP to account executive. <laughs> to be fair, I think I was eight when I was thinking about <laughs> dolphins, but <laughs> <laughs> um, my background really is in psychology, and I had a specialized focus in clinical research. So I started at Viva, like Rebecca and Kyle, implementing some of our clinical applications for our um, pharmaceutical and biotech customers. I got a lot of really, really great hands-on project experience as part of that. So I learned, you know, everything from configuring the actual uh, system to designing the solution to being a project manager. Um, Viva's great with professional development funding. So I use some of that to get my master of IT project management along the way. Um, and I just started to build these consulting skills and deep industry knowledge as we progressed through CDP. Um, and one of the great things about CDP is you're constantly hearing about other avenues that are available to you, like product management and team leads and um, being a customer success manager. And one of those stories was also about the opportunity to move to sales. So I learned um, a, a whole new leg of the business, of the Viva business that I didn't really ever think about before, um, giving demos to prospective buyers as a solution consultant or um, you know, being an account executive where your goal is really, my goal is to partner with our customers and to be their strategic advisor and to guide them, you know, knowing their business, guide them through Viva's products and make sure that it's doing what they need it to 
and really tying them into Viva products, Viva resources, Viva people, right? Connecting all the dots and kind of being that glue to make sure that they're live and happy and successful. Um, so those were skills I kind of picked up all along the way that just kind of culminated into the role that I'm in today. Yeah, excellent. So it sounds like you all had the ability to pick up some strong core foundational skill sets while you were in CDP that it sounds like you're probably using today. So maybe we can expand a little bit more about what each of you do today. So all three of you took, so our, I guess the more standard typical track is to go consulting. So you go from an associate consultant to a consultant, you know, and, and increase from there. Um, Mary obviously went into a sales role. Kyle obviously went into a product role. Rebecca went into a more of a people management role, but still within services. So I'd love to know what it means, what these roles mean. What's your day in the life like? And um, maybe if you can expand it a little bit on that. So let's start with Mary. What's, what does an account executive at Viva do? Yeah, so it's a little bit of everything, really. Um, it's guiding our prospective buyers. So pharmaceutical and biotech companies that need technology in place to run their clinical trials. And they can Google it, right? But they come to us and say, hey, here are our challenges. Here's what we're doing today. Um, and we work together to see if Viva's products are really a good fit for them. Assuming they're a good fit, right? We move forward, we do these actual implementations. We get them up and running with our products. But it's, it's about more than just the technology. We heard about the business process consulting. We heard about all of these other things that um, they could be leveraging to make their clinical trials more efficient, right? To really tell that story and to get approval for these new treatments for people that really need them. And so I am not only with our customers from that first conversation about whether or not they're gonna be a customer, right? But really um, staying in tune with them throughout the years and making sure that they are leveraging all of the resources. It's project management, it's um, manage services, it's customer success, it's a little bit of everything. It's customer facing conversations and presentations. It's internal conversations and making sure that everybody's aligned um, for the good of the customer and for the good of the Viva team and for the good of the industry overall. Somehow it's a little bit of everything peppered in all along the way every day. Yeah. It sounds like you have a, a unique role where you get to do a lot. How do you how do you keep yourself man organized? How do you manage to organize it all? I'm still working on my time management skills. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> uh, excellent. Thank you, Mary. All right, let's jump over to Kyle. Tell us what does a product manager do at Viva? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of interesting because I've I've just moved into a, a just. It feels like just, but it was the end of last year, which I guess isn't just uh, anymore. Um, but I've moved into this ePro application that we're building. And this is an application that doesn't exist yet. We're building it from the ground up. We're just starting it now. Um, and so it looks a little bit different right now. We don't actually have any live customers that I'm communicating with. That's what I did in my previous job on a regular basis. I'm reaching out to customers who are using our product. I'm kind of communicating with them new products or new features that are coming and they're giving me feedback on stuff that they're, uh, uh, that they're using. Um, but for right now in the current position I'm in, we're, we're really heads down in building the actual application. So uh, I've been fortunate enough to have, uh, his name is Jim Munns. Jim Munns is the VP of ePro. Uh, and so he, he has been handling a lot of these early customer interactions so that I can really focus on the product itself. Um, and what that really means is I'm meeting with um, user experience or UX designers to design the patient application and our ePro module, which is where you actually configure and, uh, and figure out what goes into ePro for the patient. I'm meeting regularly, daily, sometimes multiple times a day with engineers to review architecture and data flows and documenting designs so that we actually know what we're trying to build and can actually communicate that to engineers. Um, we're providing feedback as the engineers finish things. So our engineers are working super fast. I'm so freaking proud of them. Um, but they are, uh, they're just doing such an amazing job. And so I get to see that as they go through and give them feedback, iterate on that rapidly. 
Um, and that part of it's just incredibly fun. Um, but then we're, we're also collaborating and communicating with all of our other teams as well, right? So we're the MyViva team, and we also have to communicate with the Site Vault team and the ClinOps team. None of you know what that means, but just know it's different teams that we're, uh, that we're working with. So uh, that, I would say that's the majority of my day, and then like whatever three and a half other things come up uh, every hour as well. Yeah. What do you like the most about being a product manager? Oh my gosh. Um, building it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think yeah, what, one thing LinkedIn kept asking me to put in a summary. So I finally decided to do that. And one of the first things that I put in there is I just love building product. Like it, taking something that's incredibly complex, which this is like ePro in this infrastructure of trying to bring all of these teams together. It's incredibly complex, but trying to simplify it down to something that can be easily digestible, understandable, usable by these teams and owning every single side of that because we do here at Viva, um, man, it just gets me fired up. So, <laughs> Well, I'm uh, glad we have you behind our product, our products because I like that energy. That's exciting. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, all right, Rebecca. So you went from, you did the more traditional route where you went from associate consultant to consultant, continued in services, became probably a subject matter expert in your domain. And then you decided to shift a little from individual contributor to, to a people manager. So overseeing some people that you're working with. So tell us about, tell us about what that means and maybe, you know, why you decided to go into people management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I 100% decided to go into people management. <laughs> I think how Viva works is that when they know that you're the right one for the role, right. it, it happens. It's not something that I kept asking for. I want to manage people. I want to have a team. It was not it. I was doing my job as yeah. best as I could. And you kind of get plucked when the timing is right. Yeah. Um, I guess what it, what it means to be a people manager now for me is I have a bunch of consultants. What I was doing back um, just two years ago, um, I have a team of those people now implementing. So they are working with their customers and making sure that the things that Kyle builds and the things that Mary sells are all working properly and that the customers are happy. Um, I think on top of that, I'm responsible to make sure that they have the right work-life balance, that if they have any issues, that I'm there to support them and help them work through it. I'm there to guide them and grow them. And, you know, if there's any negative things that we work through it. So it's, um, I guess the, the best thing for me is I have now a baby and it's kind of, it's similar. You're, you're now responsible for these other people and their professional lives and making sure that they have, you know, everything that they need. So it's hard. It's a lot of responsibility, but I love it. Yeah. And do you ever still get a chance to talk to customers or work with customers or is it mainly through, you know, indirectly through your, um, it's, it's much less. And I do miss that. It's the one, the one thing that hurts me is not getting to talk to customers every day. It's more now on the escalation side. So I'm there as the last resort when things have maybe not gone as well as they should have. I have to come in and level set everyone and make sure that we can get to a good resolution. Um, there are some fun parts where the other side of my job that's not people managing is I get to design how we implement products. So Kyle designed something amazing. I have to figure out how do we make this work for a customer that has 50 people and they're all doing 10 different jobs. How do we still implement that? And it's not overwhelming to them. So then I do get to talk to customers and see what would work with this work. Is this too much? What do you think? And um, that part is still really fun. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things you're juggling there. Um, all right. So let's go around and just see now that you've, you've, had your first step at Vivo where you completed the consultant development program. You are where you are today. Where do you think your career is going to go from here? Um, let's start. I'll start with Rebecca. Uh, I think I'm in the same spot as I was five years ago. I still don't exactly know, but I think what's changed is I'm okay with it. Uh, back when I was starting my career, I was like, I don't know. And this is like the most important decision of my life. And what I do next dictates what happens forever. And now I just kind of trust that I'm, I'm doing something that I really like. I'm feeling challenged every day. I'm definitely not bored and I'm surrounded by amazing people that help me guide what I do next. And so, you know, I've, I've just kind of calmed down. I know that there's options. I could stay the course and just go to the next level or maybe something new happens in Viva and I choose to go do a startup and build a services team at a different place. So I think there's so many options at Viva and so many good people to talk to to get guidance that I, I don't worry about it anymore, which is really nice. 
That's cool. Yeah, just yeah, you'll it'll it'll take you in the right direction, I guess. Yeah. Let's see, Kyle. What do you think? How do you where do you think your career will go from here? I didn't think I'd get here, so I really don't <laughs> know anymore. Um, <laughs> Yeah, as I as was mentioned earlier, I mean, I've just I've just now moved into director of product management, and that literally happened three days ago. Um, so it's hard for me to even think forward because that's what I was going to say on this call as director. Um, but I mean, for from my perspective, I'm I'm 100% on board with Re what Rebecca said. Like I, Viva takes care of the people who do great work here, right? So we, I'm not worried about it. Like whatever is next for me is, is going to be great because I absolutely love what I'm doing. And I love the impact that we're having on the industry, on, on the patients that are in these clinical trials, on this process as a whole. Um, so, I mean, if I put it like a pin on it, I would say, you know, VP of product someday, mm -hmm. like that's, <laughs> that's what I would love to be. But uh, I think as long as I get to do things similar to what I'm doing right now, I'm going to, I'm going to love it. So. Excellent. Yeah. All right. And Mary, where do you think you'll go from here? I guess I'm going to be redundant here <laughs> and echo what Kyle and Rebecca said, but you know, it really is true for me as well. I didn't see CDP coming when I was in college. Um, I didn't see the sales development representative role coming when I was in CDP until I heard about it. Um, and I did not see account executive coming until you know, I decided to go be a sales development representative in the first place. I think what's great about these different development programs is that we all know you're coming out of college, right? We all came out of college um, and Viva invests a lot of resources into providing you with this really well-rounded um, career starter, basically a really great foundation. And you can take the skills and apply them in whatever direction you want to go like the sky is really the limit and Viva is such an innovative company that year over year we come out with things and I step back sometimes because like, it's been a few years now and say like wow it's even surprising to me what we've accomplished and where we're going yeah. so I think you know truly the sky is the limit and you can take what you learn and go in whatever direction energizes you or that you want to move in yeah and I, I don't know what that is for me next yeah. I'm happy where I am right now and we'll see where it takes me Excellent. Well, this may be a little redundant, but let's just go around real quick as we wrap some things up. And before we take time for Q&A, I'd love to hear what your advice would be, you know, that our audience here are new grads who are either currently looking or will be looking soon for a full-time role after, after university. And I'd love to know what your advice would be for them right now. Um, so Mary, I'll start with you. What advice? Um, I guess just thinking openly about what you enjoy doing, about what energizes you and how those skills could really be applicable to a variety of options. Like I knew I liked helping people and solving problems and I didn't know an account executive role existed and that that would tie in really well when I was thinking about a psychology career. Um, but it, there's a lot of correlation there. Um, so exploring things that sound interesting or exciting that's always my meter. If something sounds exciting to me, uh, then I know I'm probably moving in that direction and it's probably gonna work out well. So I guess in tandem with, if something seems exciting, you know, ask, ask questions about it, right? Find out more, try to find people that are um, doing those things and pick their brain and see if it feels like a good fit for you. And ultimately my advice is to start your career at Viva in this awesome program and then grow in whatever direction you want to grow in. But that's really the course I took and it has not served me wrong. So I guess that would be my advice to others as well. Not biased at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Uh, Kyle, what about you? What advice do you have for this next generation? Yeah, so this is this is a question that I've been asked uh, a couple of times, and so I generally give two two main pieces of advice. So I think the the first piece is to always strive to work hard and be productive with your time. Uh, and I think many of you have probably heard the mantra of "work smarter, not harder." And I think I can 
I can get on board with that, um, but can you imagine what would happen if you worked smart and hard? <laughs> um, you know, there, there's definitely something to be said for, you know, putting all of your energy into something and, uh, and coming out ruling the world someday, or at least becoming an account executive or a practice manager or a product manager. Um, my, my second piece of advice is to, no matter where you are, and this isn't, this isn't in Viva, this is just in general, but become a guru of something. Um, it could be a product, it could be an application, it could be functionality somewhere, it could be you know, a topic. Like, I, I don't know what it is for you, um, but the idea here is uh, not to become so specialized that you can't do anything else, but that you're the go-to person whenever questions about that topic come up. Um, so for example, you know, oh, I wanna know something about small and medium businesses using Vault Clinical. Bam, I know exactly who you're talking to, you're talking to Rebecca. Um, so, I mean, just becoming that person that if somebody asks a question, you're the go-to, you're the guy, you're the girl. Um, yeah, I think that's a, that's a big thing and that gets you noticed. Yeah, it keeps, it keeps life kind of, it keeps you engaged too, right? It keeps you mm -hmm. wanting to learn more. So I like that. I like that advice. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Rebecca, what about you? What advice do you have for, for new grads entering or going to be entering the workforce soon? Yeah, I think the first one is just do something that's challenging you. Don't just go with what is the safe bet. It's great to have a backup plan, but push yourself. And I'm like, that. that's the best thing that I ever did with my life was just do something that scared the heck out of me. Um, the other, I guess it was more like, I don't know, a, a check for myself. I was told that, I don't know, I, I wasn't sure if I was on the right path or what I was doing was the right thing. And someone just told me, you know, if you're happy and you're enjoying what you're doing, then don't worry about changing it. And I think that kind of goes to what Kyle was saying. If you're, if you like what you're doing, you're going to become the expert and then it just naturally falls into place. And if you don't like what you're doing, then think about really targetedly, what do you not like about it so that you can make an informed decision? Don't just like jump to something else and hope that it's going to be right. Really think about what's good and what's bad for you and then, and then try something new. Yep. Yep. Excellent advice. Typically, if you like what you're good at, you're going to be, you're going to be even better at it. Right. So, um, okay. So I, I did see Anka message one question in, so this is from Michaela, it looks like, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, Let's see. So the question is, thanks. Uh, my question for you is during your time in the new grad program, what did success look like for you and what made you feel like an excellent employee? I think I, think I can, I can start. You guys can chime okay. in too. Um, but I think from, from my perspective, one of the things that I've always loved about Viva is the candid feedback that we get. I mean, in, in consulting specifically, you're you're generally not on projects alone. You're generally on projects with other people. And those, those people are more than willing to give you feedback on what you've done. Um, and so it, it's not only, it's not always going to be excellent. So don't expect that. Um, but they do give you excellent feedback. Uh, and sometimes they say, yeah, man, you did, you knocked that workshop right out of the park. And I loved it. And that, that's what made me feel like an excellent employee when I, when I, my project manager on this project that I'm on was like, man, you just, you, you did a great job there. Uh, and that happens all the time. I still, I still get that from, from my manager and I'm a product manager now. So um, not sure if you guys kind of feel the same way there, but what do you guys think? Yeah, I had a similar experience, but from a customer. So when you, mm. our customers can get multiple products and when they start asking, oh, can I have Rebecca to implement my next product? And I don't even know quality, but they're like, oh, we don't care. We trust you. We want you. That's like, wow, they really believe in me. And that just feels amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think the feedback is really important. I mean, you have very clear expectations with any of these development programs, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. And there are many channels that will give you direct feedback and let you know how you're doing against that. So professionally speaking, I think it's really easy to know if you are successful or not. And then of course, personally speaking, if you're happy, you're probably successful there too, you know? Agree. All right. So yeah, I guess the key takeaway here is that, you know, obviously we have a, you know, 
several new grad development programs here at Viva dedicated to helping you start and grow your career in the right way at Viva. And the fun doesn't stop there. It keeps going afterwards. Um, we hope that you will take a minute to take a look at what all we have to offer. I would bet that we have a little something for everyone because we do have a lot to a lot to offer from our programs, but feel free to check us out on Way Up, our GV website. Um, or if you have any more questions, let's see, you can reach out to me directly if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Sarah Young and would love to connect with all of you on LinkedIn. And we really appreciate you all uh, being here today and having an interest in Viva and where these folks can grow at Viva. So thank you all for being here.